Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the channel. I'm fresh off my vacation and back to reviewing some 4K movies. So, we're going to jump right into today, which is Schindler's List in 4K. So, I was really excited to check this out because it's a black and white movie, primarily. Obviously, if you've seen the movie, you know that there are very limited splashes of color and I mean extremely limited other than that the movie is black and white and so this was the first black and white movie that I was going to be able to check out in 4k with HDR and so that was really exciting for me as a reviewer um, to get to check that out and then you know hopefully this will give me an idea of what movies like it's a wonderful life or maybe something like King Kong the original or you know there's so many good black and white movies some of the Charlie Chaplin stuff they could do in 4k and really improve so it was really interesting to check out um, obviously if you know uh, Schindler's List there isn't much to say about the movie it's one of the greatest movies ever made as I was watching it um, you know even though I haven't seen it in quite a few years it's still kind of it, it still strikes a nerve with you it still makes you really upset it still makes you think it makes you just wonder how could this ever happen um, just the, the horrendous nature of this and it's just I, I forgot how graphic it was how really dark the whole movie was it, it's a really it's so realistic and Steven Spielberg did an amazing job um, so obviously it's one of the best movies ever made now the 4k rest, uh, restoration was um, overseen by Steven Spielberg. So it was completely restored in 4K, uh, supervised by Spielberg. He worked with the folks at uh, Universal who uh, worked on this transfer and Spielberg's team to, to work on the Schindler's List 4K. And uh, Schindler's List was shot on film. So it says right here on the back, it was meticulously, meticulously restored from the original film negative in 4K. And you can tell. So it has a very nice grain structure, but I think it's a better picture than Close Encounters. So Close Encounters of the Third Kind is a good comparison point. Another movie shot on film by Steven Spielberg, and he supervised that restoration as well. This is a much cleaner image. There's still a really solid grain structure, and maybe it's just the 15 years difference in between the movies and the upgraded technology, but the visuals here are so clean, so crisp, and you still get the grain. Like, you still know this was shot on film. This is definitely shot on film. This is an older movie. You can see the grain. So if you're looking for a smooth digital picture, you're not getting that here. But that's what I love about it. But this is so much smoother and cleaner and crisper than Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So maybe it's a better restoration overall, but it's definitely an amazing picture. Now the HDR is where it gets really interesting because you're really only working with the grayscale, right? If you get some whites, blacks, grays, that's all you have in this movie. And HDR is well known for being able to deliver deeper blacks, better grayscale, all that stuff. Um, and so I did a comparison with the Blu-ray. Honestly, uh, the HDR improvement is not as noticeable as I thought it might be, but my TV also has very deep blacks. And so when I checked this out on my 4K TV, the Blu-ray and the 4K disc looked very similar because I have a QLED TV, Quantum. It's got very, very deep blacks, almost like an OLED. Then I put it on my projector, and that's where you can totally see the difference. And so I immediately noticed that the HDR helped a lot with the deeper blacks in, in the gray uniformity, and everything just looked a lot crisper from a color standpoint on uh, 4K with the projector compared to the Blu-ray. So I think a lot of this will come down to sort of what equipment you have and whether it can take full advantage of that. But when you've got something like a projector, which, you know, it has great blacks, but it's not going to have the you know OLED black levels, and so when you make that comparison, say you had a mid-range TV, your typical 4K TV, you didn't shell out five grand on an OLED, you know, brand new technology. You just have your typical run-of-the-mill 4K TV. The HDR here is definitely going to be an improvement. It helps with the black levels. It helps your TV to distinguish between you know what should be you know light gray versus dark gray versus pure black, or, you know all that stuff. The HDR helps a lot. If you have a very nice TV, you might not notice the difference in black and white, but I think for most of you who have even lower end OLED stuff or QLED, quantum, you know, there's a bunch of different names for it out there that have really deep black levels. Um, I think even if you have a lower to mid-level range of one of those, 
you're going to notice because I this is a four thousand or three thousand dollar projector, and I can tell there um, even though it has very deep dark levels of uh, blacks and grays and it has a very deep color scheme in that projector. That's one of the benefits of it. Um, I can still tell the difference compared to your LED or OLED TV. And so I think that's just kind of interesting. I think most of you will be able to tell a difference, but the resolution, the grain looks so much better in 4K. It's an overall better picture. I was actually surprised to see though that I thought it was more improved um, from a resolution standpoint than HDR. Just kind of an interesting thing to note. Maybe the black and white, maybe you can really tell that that grain structure stands out uh, even a little bit more when it's just dealing with black and white. Uh, I don't know what it was, but it was a very, very good restoration here by Spielberg and the team behind it. Um, it looks incredible. It looks so good. So um, real quick, you see on the packaging, um, you know, you've got a slip cover, right? Got your basic and bull moose. One complaint to have about bull moose is putting these big stickers on the slip cover. Thankfully, if you ever get something like this, a little pro tip side note, stick it in the freezer for an hour, come back to it, and it basically just freezes the glue and you can just peel this thing off like it's no tomorrow. You can also use like a hut, um, like an air dryer, uh, hair dryer to um, heat it up and then that loosens up the glue, but it's just a pain in the neck, so please, retailers don't put stickers on the slip cover um, but on the inside there is a digital copy which I've already removed um, then you've got your 4k disc with some nice disc art and then you've also got your blu-ray uh, and your bonus disc so the nice thing about the bonus disc I have the 20th anniversary blu-ray of Schindler's List and this includes all the same bonus material from that release and so again this is a situation where you could uh, trade in your blu-ray unless you really like the packaging because it's pretty cool But you could trade in your blu-ray upgrade to 4k. This was 20 bucks at bull moose You can probably find it for maybe 15 on eBay um, And it, you know, you'll end up paying what maybe six or seven bucks total to upgrade if you trade in or sell your blu-ray So it's a good deal um, And then I, I totally forgot on the audio though. This has a uh, Dolby Atmos track, which is great now Schindler's List, there's, you know, obviously there's some, I don't even want to call them action scenes because that seems just like really, that's just not the way to describe what's going on when there's a mass genocide. Um, but there are some, you know, action scenes, I guess, louder sequences. Um, one, of, one of the best ones was when they're uh, cleansing the ghetto. Um, that happens maybe an hour into the movie. It's a three hour movie, remember, so it's very long. But about an hour in, there's some really good audio there. There's things going on overhead. There's um, bags falling down, people throwing stuff out of windows. The Nazis are, are running around the tops of buildings while there are people downstairs and they're getting shot. And uh, Oscar Schindler's up on the hill and he's kind of watching this all happen from above. And so there's a lot of good use of audio elements there. The Atmos is really cool. Uh, really powerful in that sequence and it also just has a great score this movie has a great score where it's you know there's just so many dramatic moments that have great music behind it and the Atmos track definitely improved that experience um, honestly though your biggest upgrade here is definitely going to be the resolution and, and I'm surprised to say that usually I'm a big you know HDR is more important than 4k resolution type of guy but in this case, the resolution was much improved over the Blu-ray and the grain structure was much nicer. That restoration that they did was just incredible. And so major props. Um, interesting that I didn't notice a whole lot of HDR improvements with black and white, but you know, we'll see. I need to review more black and white movies. You know, the studio's got to get making these, uh, putting out more 4K remasters of these older movies um, that are just excellent, but are in black and white. I'd love to see stuff like Casablanca and like I mentioned, King Kong, uh, some of the old Frank Capra stuff, which we are getting with It's a Wonderful Life, but there's there's other movies of his I'd want to see, Charlie Chaplin, um, even going way back to like Buster Keaton stuff. If they could do a 4K remaster of that, that'd be super cool. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Overall, pretty interesting to check this out in black and white, 4K. Um, but it's definitely worth the upgrade. I don't see... Uh, I, don't, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't, especially if you have a Blu-ray to trade in. You can get this for 15 bucks. It's well worth the seven or eight dollars. I'm watching it, you know, from 10 feet away on a hundred-inch projector screen, 
and it just looks incredible. And at that distance, I really should see more grain and more detail and you're not getting as full a picture, right? Because I'm kind of close to my projector screen, as you guys know. When I watched it on my 55 inch TV sitting 10 feet away, I mean, what an incredible picture. And so if you have a big home theater, big projector, big TV, and you're sitting, you know, a fair distance away, this is going to look like a the most beautiful, like it's going to look like a film reel. It's going to look like you loaded up the actual negative into a film reel and, and played it on a projector like in your house. It's incredible. So super, super cool. Steven Spielberg, make a 4K restoration of Jaws and I'll be the happiest dude in the world. But so far, I'm happy with this 25th anniversary edition of Schindler's List. It's well worth an upgrade and I highly recommend that you do pick this one up. So that's about it for today's video. Um, I was getting some feedback from a lot of you guys that I need to kind of speed things up, stop talking so much. I know I can talk a lot. So I want to get to the point here, speed up this review, and, and sort of just let you guys know, is this worth an upgrade or not, right? Let's get to the point. Um, so I hope you liked the little change of pace here. I kind of just jumped right into things. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you have Schindler's List. Uh, let me know what you thought of the transfer in the comments. And uh, let me know what else you're kind of looking forward to me reviewing. I have things like Rocket Man and Godzilla King of the Monsters that'll be coming soon. I also still need to do Bridge on the River Kwai. And if there's any other 4K movies that you're looking for me to take a review um, you know, video on, definitely let me know in the comments. Um, also, a couple things here. Remember to follow me on Instagram. You can also buy merch from my Teespring uh, store. You can find those links right below this video or by heading to uh, my description. There's a couple links in there. And as always, if you're interested in things that I have in my home theater, like my seating or my projector, projector screen or shelving, any of that stuff, there are Amazon links down in the description where you can buy exactly what I have in my home theater. And if you purchase through those links, it helps support the channel. So that's about it for today. Hopefully you go out and grab uh, Schindler's List in 4K. It, this is the kind of work that we need to support as physical media collectors. When a director in a studio gets behind a full restoration like this and just creates a beautiful, beautiful visual on 4K, that's the kind of stuff you've got to support. Um, and so I'm happy I purchased mine. Hopefully you guys grab yours. And uh, that's about it for this one. I'll talk to you guys soon. Like I said, lots of new exciting 4K movies on the way, including some older stuff, which I haven't gotten to, and some really cool home theater videos coming soon. So stay tuned for all that. Make sure you're subscribed, turning on my notifications, and I will talk to you guys soon.